To use the test prop C function, you either have to use the x1 and x2 arguments or the dv and iv arguments. You use one set of arguments or the other, but not both at the same time. If you're using test prop C for a one sample hypothesis test, you'll use the x1 and x2 arguments. But if you're doing a two sample hypothesis test, whether you use the x1 and x2 arguments or the dv and iv arguments depends on the nature of the problem, as we'll see. The test prop C function has some standard optional arg arguments. With test prop C, you have options to weight observations, specify the data set name, the number of digits to display after the decimal point, and whether you want results printed to an HTML file in your working directory. The function also has some unique optional arguments na named response, which you can use to specify the response value to be tested, like if you want to focus on the disagree response rather than the agree response. By default, test prop C will report the 95% confidence interval of the difference of proportions, but you can modify the confidence level in the ci.level argument or suppress the ci table by setting the ci.table argument to false. By default, test mean C will also plot the difference of proportions and its margin of error to help you visualize your difference of proportions test. You can fine tune the plot using the main xlab and xlim arguments or suppress the plot by setting the ci.plot argument to false. To learn how to use the test prop C function, let's work through some examples. Okay, we can use the test prop C function to test hypotheses about proportions, and this function, the test prop C, can be used for a one sample test or a two sample test. Uh, I'm gonna start with the one sample test, but also illustrate uh, or demonstrate the two sample tests. So to conduct a one sample test, what we're doing there is um, comparing a sample proportion against a hypothesized value to see if the hypothesized value is plausible. I'm gonna do this with a variable in the NES data set involving the important traits for children. Uh, and before I jump into the hypothesis test, this isn't really required, but I think it's a good idea to do this. Um, to do some kind of anal descriptive analysis, analysis of the variable so you can understand what the values are and what you're looking at. So I'm going to look at this child.manners variable and just do a quick frequency uh, analysis of it using the frequency function. And mostly what I'm going to look at here is um, what are the values and what are the descriptive statistics. And I didn't do weights for this because I'm just kind of doing a rough and ready version of it. So the two responses are it's more important for a child to have curiosity or good manners. And it looks like good manners is ahead of curiosity here. Um, so those are the two values. There's, a, there's both response uh, that can be volunteered in live interviews. Uh, just a handful of respondents are coded that way. I'm just going to for purposes of the demonstration, just really ignore that response. So what you might be interested in doing is testing whether, uh, you know, majority of people, you know, given random sampling, uh, think that it's possible for a, a child to have curiosity over good manners. So to do that, it looks, you know, descriptively, it looks like that's not the case, but that just could be random sampling error, which is something we might be interested in testing. Uh, so we use the test prop C function. Uh, the X1 argument is set equal to the variable. So in this case, I will do child manners. And X2 is the X2 is the hypothesized value. So in this case, I'll say 0.5 for the you know, whether with testing against the majority or half the respondents. And this time, I do want to use the weights variable because I think it's pretty interesting, and I want representative responses. So these are the required arguments. Let's give this a run and take a look. So the function generates uh, several tables in a plot. Let's take a look at this. So it tells us at the outset, since we didn't identify the response value to compare, it defaults to the first response, curiosity. So we are going to 
compare uh, the proportion who think it's more important for a child to be curious than well behaved or to, to, more important to be curious than to have good manners against a hypothesized value of 0.5. So the null hypothesis is that the sample proportion is equal to 0.5 and the alternative hypothesis is that the sample proportion is not equal to 0.5. The descriptive statistics, this should reflect what we saw before, although the, now the proportion is weighted. Uh, the proportion who think it's more important for a child to be curious is 0.399. Uh, the hypothesized value is just shown there is 0.5. The appropriate test is a z-test where it's comparing the hypothesized value, the sample value to the hypothesized value and dividing that difference by the standard error. This will give us a Z statistic of minus 16.83, which has a very low P value. So we conclude that the observed proportion is different than 0.5. Uh, and then the last table gives us a 95% confidence interval of the difference of proportions. Uh, the difference is a little more than uh, 0.1, so it's minus 0.101, uh, and then the plot here is, is plotting that confidence interval. So you can see that it's significantly lower than zero. Zero is the dashed vertical line here, and then the point is the point estimate, this value, and then the tails of it, the lower bound and the upper bound, are pretty small because we have a large sample uh, so we're not actually seeing those on the plot. So that tells us that the plausible range of values is less than zero. There is a difference between this observed value, observed proportion, uh, let's say the child should, the child should be more important for a child to be curious, and 0.5. So less, I'm confident that a, less than a majority of respondents think that it's important, more important for a child to be curious than to have good manners. Okay, so the, the variant of this test is a two sample test and we can use the same function, test prop C. And instead of, well, two actually gonna be two versions of this two sample test. We can use the DV and IV or we can use X1 and X2. I'm gonna show you both, I'm gonna try to do this relatively quickly too. The DV here is set equal to the response variable uh, like in this case, I'm going to stick with child manners. And then the independent variable is going to be a variable in the data set that defines two different groups. So we can compare group one group to the other group. Uh, so in this case, I think the gender variable will do that for us. I'm going to use the weight variable again. Let's give this a run and see what it looks like. So again, it's going to default to comparing uh, the curiosity values between males and females. And the null hypothesis is that the proportion of males saying it's more important for a child to be curious is equal to the proportion of females who say it's more important for a child to be curious. So the males are group one and the females are group two. The null hypothesis is that their response, the proportions are equal. The alternative hypothesis is that the proportions are not equal. One of the groups, males or females, uh, I think has, is a higher proportion uh, for the importance of curiosity. The table of descriptive statistics gives us a first look at this. It says that the proportion of males who think it is more important for a child to be curious is 0.461, and the proportion of females who think it's more important for a child to be curious, 0.38. And we can see the N in both groups, males and females. So this is descriptive statistics, and the hypothesis test is a Z test. Uh, the difference of proportions between these two groups, if you just took the male amount and subtracted the female proportion, we would get 0 .0, 0 0.033. Uh, we see the standard error of that difference. And if we divide the observed difference by the standard error of the difference, we get the test statistic, a Z statistic, and the value is 2.861. And its p-value, two-tailed, is 0 0.004. So less than 1%. 
of observing this test statistic by chance. And then the last table gives us the confidence interval of the difference of proportions. We see the point estimate here. It's the same as the difference of proportions, 0 0.033. The lower bound of the value is 0 0.010, and the upper bound is 0 0.056. What's interesting about this is, what's noteworthy about this, is that the lower bound is great, significantly greater than zero. So the lowest plausible value is 0 0.01 or 1%, and zero is not a plausible value, which reinforces the conclusion <coughs> from the, re reinforces the p-value from the z-test. Uh, the p-value is less than 0 0.05, uh, so we were, we'd be unlikely to observe this difference by chance. And we can see, reinforce that with the confidence interval, that our confidence interval does not include zero. And we see the values plotted here. Um, in a minute, we're going to zoom in on this to see a little more closely. But you can see, if you look closely, that the lower bound uh, and the point does not intersect the vertical line that's at zero. So we can be fairly confident that there is a gender difference uh, with respect to the importance of a child having curiosity or manners. Now, as I promised to you that there is another uh, version of the two sample tests that uses the X1 and X2 arguments. Um, so it's somewhat similar to the, the DV and IV usage, but instead of groups defined by gender, each variable essentially uh, kind of defines a group. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but uh, maybe if I illustrate it, it'll make more sense. So we're going to use, rather than just one variable, we're going to use two variables and then compare uh, response category for each variable. And the, the, the trick really to this is you've got to pick variables or you would, you would use this with variables that are coded the, the same way. So for example, I might say that the X1 variable is going to be um, one of these spending variables. I'll just kind of do this quickly. So I'll say Porter. And X2 is set equal to another one of the variables like crime. And I'm going to use the weight variable again. So it's going to compare uh, the responses, you know, respondents feeling about spending on border patrol compared to spending on crime and see if there's a significant difference. And the note here is saying, like, we're going to compare the proportion who say that the spending should be increased a lot. OK, so the difference of proportions test, we're comparing the proportion who say that spending on the border should be increased a lot to the proportion who say that spending on uh, crime control should be increased a lot. The null hypothesis is that the proportions who say increased a lot is the same for both of these spending categories. And the alternative hypothesis is that the proportion who say that spending should be increased a lot is different between these two spending categories. Descriptive statistics, you see that 0 0.303 of respondents say that spending on border patrol should be increased a lot, whereas on crime, the value is 0 0.374. So it's higher on crime. Is this a result of random sampling error? The z-test gives us some insight on that. We've got our difference of proportions. The difference of proportions, uh, group two is 0 0.0717 higher. See the standard error of the difference of those proportions. If we divide those two values, you get a Z statistic minus 9.717. The P-value is minuscule, uh, very close, to, not quite zero, but very close to zero. We have its confidence interval of that difference. The point estimate is the difference of the proportions. And we've got a lower bound and upper bound value. And the plot here shows that confidence interval of the difference plotted. Uh, the whole amount of it is less than zero. So the upper bound, even the upper bound of this, the statistic or the difference is less than zero. So we conclude that these two are different. And the key here, just to reiterate, the variables need to be coded the same way. So you're kind of making apples to apples comparison. You're comparing, you know, the spending priority 
in one category to the spending priority in another category. And this is kind of the way that, that the X1 versus X2 uh, difference of proportions test makes sense. You would not, for example, and I didn't, so I didn't demonstrate this. It wouldn't make sense to say compare, you know, the proportion of respondents who say a child should be well-mannered to the proportion of respondents who think that uh, spending on crime control should be increased a lot. I mean, those are two kind of incomparable responses. So this X1 versus X2, the two sample test, uses variables that are coded similarly. So we would have a common response category, like one increased a lot that we can compare uh, X1 versus X2.